what's going on everybody today we're going to talk about tcg player direct as part of the how to sell on tcg player series so you may be joining here today sitting down and, and watching just to learn what exactly is direct when you buy a card from direct or what happens you know where does it come from how, you know it says it comes from a different shop but it actually ships from tcg player what's going on with it you may be a seller that wants to take your you know game to the next level and I highly recommend TCG Player Direct. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to get in the program first. Then once you're in, like what to expect, what are the fees like? Then we're gonna move into monthly KPIs that you're measured on in the Direct program and why I believe that those were, um, you know, kind of focused on in the past couple months and what happened with that. A lot of controversy. A lot of controversy good, makes a good story. And, you know, and then finally, I think um, just my perspective and outlook of, of TCG Player Direct. So with that, let's get started. Now, we're going to use a real high-end card here today to, for our discussion. Uh, we're going to use a Sunkern Twilight Masquerade. Uh, it appears to be a common Pokemon card. So this is probably worth a cent, one penny. This is probably worth a penny, but TCG Player Direct is, you know, something that you can ship all kinds of cards on and make money doing it, but we'll get there. So how do you get into TCG Player Direct? Well, first, you have to have an inventory of 4,000 or more cards. That's the first criteria. Second criteria, you have to have a uh, feedback score of greater than like 98%. That's the second one. And then the third one um, is you have to apply and, and they'll do an overview of your account and you'll get a, you know, you'll get a feedback or whether you're not accepted. So do those three things. You get your inventory up, you get your uh, feedback score up, and um, you gotta make sure you're shipping on time too to keep that feedback score up. And then you apply. So you apply and you get in. What do you expect? Well, it'll it'll change your game. Like, right, I went from initially when I just started this, my little shop, way back when I was getting like 10 card sales a day. And we're not talking like high dollar card. Get into TCG Player Direct, that 10 like tripled, maybe quadrupled. I was getting 40, 50 a day sometimes sales. It was great. So the way it works is, yeah, it's like I hand you a five, you hand me 10. Okay, I got 10, I'll give you a 20. Okay, you got the 20. You're constantly passing around this card. And that's why I have this today for our experiment. So it works this way. I list this card on my inventory for two cents. Two cents, okay? In my inventory. TCG player has the same card in their inventory. So when you're in direct, your price is assigned to their inventory. They will ship that card to the customer from their inventory on your behalf. But within so many days, within two days of um, an invoice being cut, you owe a reimbursement it's called a reimbursement invoice, an RI. You owe a reimbursement of this Sunkern to TCG Player. If your Sunkern is a near is not near mint and you sold a near mint one, up oh, you're out. You, they send your card back. You get you have to buy the, the replacement card for them, and they fee you a percent on top of that. So you can't, you make mistakes, it starts snowballing, right? It'll snowball fast for, you know, fees and all that kind of stuff. So that's the concept. It's this sharing program where you get to dip into their inventory, but you also have to replace their inventory if it sells. So it's your sale, you get the money, but you're replacing the inventory at a later date. Very useful though, it's because you can do a, a large quantity where you're shipping a lot of cards just to TCG Player. Now, a re reimbursement invoice cuts, or TCG Player says, "Okay, time to send us cards. It's it. It's it's time." 
once you hit three hundred dollars in sales on direct it'll cut a reimbursement invoice monday wednesday or friday the next monday wednesday or friday following the moment you reach three hundred dollars that reimbursement invoice cuts at 5.37 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you have 48 hours to get that thing delivered to TCG Player. And the purpose behind that is they don't want you selling cards you don't have, and then you go and you try to buy them, and they're constantly waiting for you to get them the cards, right? Which it makes sense. You don't want to constantly have this debt of cards that you have to constantly replace. So that's kind of what the program's like. The fee structure on the program, though, is a whole nother animal. Believe it or not, every card that you sell, $3 and under, is a 50% fee. You may not realize that. I'll say it again, 50% fee if you sell a three dollar card the fee is one dollar and fifty cents if you sell a two cent card the fee is one cent mind-blowing massive amount of fees and the reason for it is because it's a it's a convenience it's a good service it'll drive your sales but you have to pay for that space it's essentially tcg players got to pay for that space of all of these cards and the ones under $3 are not your main, that's not driving your profits. I mean, if you're a bulk seller, it, it can be, right? But that's not what's driving TCG players revenue, is not the cards under $3. So the fee is, you know, essentially the thought process. Well, you're, you have time, labor, you don't have to pay for an envelope, you don't have to pay for a card saver, ship, shipping shield, all these other kind of things. So therefore, we are going to increase the fees for that. Now, as you start to sell more and more and more expensive single cards or expensive orders together, multiple cards in one order, the longer and the, and the, and the, and the more you have of those, the more the fee is reduced, all right? So the fee goes down as the card value, percent-wise, goes down as the card values go up. But the thing is, if you're a bulk seller and you're like, oh man, I can buy bulk at, at five cents and flip it for 10 cents a card. No, you can't because if you're on direct, it's a 50% fee. You're going to do all that work just to break even, right? So be mindful of that um, and, and, you know, make sure that that is right for you. I know there's a lot of folks that sell like bulk and things and TCG player might not be right for them because it has so many fees. So now let's get into what TCG player has been up to on the direct program in the past couple months. So I believe there's just been so many people in this TCG player direct program and so many people send them garbage cards. It's like, Oh, let me just kind of get this one scuffed. I'll, they'll slip it in. Nobody will ever notice. Well, it's a lot of work every time they have to have a person intake an order. And if your order you know, has 80% correct, 20% errors, they're going to be pulling out cards all day, marking stuff and having to... It's a lot of work and extra cost for them for all of your mistakes. So they implemented new, new rules and guidelines and laws that says you need to be at a 98% correct rate, only a 2% flaw rate. Really hard to do. Overnight, people just got letters saying, boom, you're out of the program. You're gone. Gone, 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 gone. I, I have a feeling it's been folks that are chronically under 90% accuracy got those letters. Um, in fairness and full transparency, right? I, I do a meticulous job making sure my inventory is correct. I, nothing's ever perfect. And my error rate is about 2.15%. So I'm right at that, you know, that legal 2% error rate. I'm not in the 99s. I'm not in the, you know, I'm not close to 99.9 or anything like that. It's very hard because also you could send a card in that you believe is near mint and the grader and the other person is, is like, no, I don't think it is. 
and there's other duplication well they'll double check before they send it back to you and we'll get into that too this is going to be a long video but it's it's worth it because there's not a lot of material out there about tcg player direct so you know you could get into it and and you know with another person that works there and they're you know all of a sudden just two cards on a hundred cards that you guys disagree with about the condition all of a sudden you're now that's it that's it that's not even including if you make a mistake for getting a card to put it in or if you have an inventory issue that's just the conditioning so be mindful if you go on tcg player direct and, and you want to sell in that direction it's a great program and i take full advantage of it however You've got to make sure you do it right. You got to take your time. Don't be sloppy. Um, and you know, try your best to try your best to condition the cards correctly. So you know that moves us, I guess, to the next topic of pricing for TCG Player Direct. So you can price through the mass price tool if you are a TCG player pro seller. So you have your normal account, which is a seller, TCG player seller. Then you have a pro seller account, and then you have a direct account. So there's different fee structures for TCG player dependent upon which types of accounts you have. So I have a pro account and a direct account, which means that I'm allowed to use the quick list scan tool. I can use the mass price tool and all those types of things, as well as direct. You're able to mass price your product for direct, which is amazing, right? Because I can constantly make sure that my pricing is competitive. The challenges with some of these tools that you have to be really mindful of, if you load bad inventory, they will sell and there's nothing you can do about it, and you'll have to pay to buy someone else a replacement card, and you'll have to pay a fee on top of it. All right, so be very careful with pricing because it can get out of hand real fast. It can also get out of hand real fast if you have the incorrect inventory listed. So if you're scanning stuff and the scans aren't correct and you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you're not paying attention to the scanner, all of a sudden you have all these cards in your inventory that you don't really have, and then you get slammed with hundreds of dollars of fees, depending on how many of those instances that you have. So be very mindful of that. So, once you have sold that $300, you know, shipment and of reimbursements for TCG player, um, you package them up and I like to put them in a BCW bulk box, um, two to 500 cards. My average is like, I think, um, I think I was told last month, my average card value was $4 and 87 cents through the direct program. So I'm above that $3. I, I tend to at some point, if a card is a penny, if it's worth a penny, all right, and let's say you get a penny on it, it's gonna cost weight to ship it. It's gonna cost time to sort and move it. At some point, I, I mean, there's value in these cards. There's value in some of this stuff. Don't get me wrong. But you have to say on a massive scale, what's gonna bring you the money? So you pull, you bought, you, package up all of your stuff and I, t I like to put them in team bags so i'll put them in team bags and then i use a sharpie and i'll write that and match it up with the invoice but you have to have everything in the right order so you better have everything organized because you're gonna you might have an order of 500 cards to pull and ship in just a few hours right so you better be able to pull those 500 cards fast so make sure you're your inventory is is correct and, and you're organizing things properly i probably should do a video on organization and stuff but tcg direct is a very valuable tool i i love the program i buy cards from the program i use the program to sell my cards so with that i hope you guys learned something today about direct um, please look at my discord reach out to me 
Join my Patreon if you're interested in these types of discussions, if you if you would like some help, if there's something I can do to help you improve um, and take you to the next level from a consulting perspective. I do have some second uh, phase left of patron um, slots available. Uh, I'm going to have three early waves and they're, they're, full, they're filling up fast and then it's going to move into the standard pricing from there. Um, so please check it out if you're interested. And like I said, consider if direct's right for you. Um, it's not right for everybody. It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, in many cases, it's very good for stores because you can move buy, um, buy and list inventory that you've purchased off of people very quickly. So I, I do think for stores, it's a really good thing. If you're at home in your basement and you're selling cards on TCG player, consider whether or not that's right for you. It's a large time investment. So again, yeah, check out my Discord, join it, um, reach out to me, have a conversation, join my Patreon, get in on some uh, rip and ship deals and, um, you know, lo longer discussions about TCG Player and how I can help you. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks to all the patrons out there. Take care and have a good day.